So because I'm going to do the rear flange, I want to put this clamp back in place. This uh, this rear clamp back in place. If you if you don't clamp this tightly, when you go to bend your your flange, the material just just inside where the crimping location will actually have a tendency to want to kind of buckle itself up as the flange folds over. It'll buckle back on itself and you don't want that to happen so by crimping it tightly you minimize that. And as you can see when there's no flutes in there you actually can form that relatively quickly. Same goes for the other end. Although this isn't a great camera angle. You work your way up and down the flange. flat against your forming board. And then when you're all done, it's nice and flat and you don't have any crimping locations on a, on a perfectly flat bend, a 90 degree bend with no uh, curvature to it. One thing I want to caution you about when you're when you're doing these is when you first start forming your rib there's this is the unformed section of flange that's on the top of the wing surface and what I had done on one of my ribs and unfortunately it was a small rib but I did this years ago on one before I had to take a break from building I didn't have this clamped as tightly as I thought I had in the vise and I also had this part of the material resting down against the um, arm here of the vise and so what I ended up doing was when I was forming that part I was hitting it pretty pretty hard it actually slipped in the jaws and this flange just tore right up and then the whole forming block came down and rested right on there and I didn't even know I was doing it because it was doing it gradually so make sure that you've got the flange material when you're clamped in the vise and you first start out because you're your whatever's on the bottom side will be just a regular thin piece of material that you've got this clamped tightly and you've got at least some gap in this space here so that you're not resting the metal against this you, you don't even want to do it after it's formed either so when I flip this around you definitely don't want to have that in the same have the flange resting against that part either but um, So if you have this part resting down against that part of the vise, you'll, you'll end up with a dent and a scraped up piece of metal and whatever, but um, you know that's a, that's a big problem with your material if you end up doing that. So now here you can see that that's the part I was forming on the other side. It's nice and smooth, not very much ripple to it at all. It's quite straight and uh, all I have left to do now is form the top curvature and I'm going to transfer the clamps to pretty much the same corresponding locations um, to the top of the rib and follow the same procedure. Again we're using several clamps along the uh, very edge of the form block so that we keep those two form blocks tight together where we're actually bending the metal. It doesn't do us any good to clamp in the center. We just need the bolts there for locating holes so that it doesn't slide one way or the other but when we clamp we want to clamp the very edges to keep that metal tight together and we start the process all over again <clears throat> again very gradually just start start that flange to bend get it started just a little bit just want that radius to start bending first pass. So 
so that it gets the correct shape and doesn't buckle in the wrong spot. That's pretty good. We've got that just started. And now we can take our, our crimping or fluting pliers and put the crimps in exactly where we need them. On the top radius of the wing, for my airplane anyway, there are five crimp locations. Because there's more curvature to the wing than the, on the top surface than there is the bottom surface, there's more crimping locations. So here you can see I've just put some just little crimps in there. That's all those pliers will put in there. Little crimp locations. There's five of them down the length of the down the length of the wing, and then the tail piece here. That's about eight nine inches there. That doesn't need any because it's almost a straight line. So those crimps are in place now, which means that the metal will automatically fall into place once you hammer them flat and then the process again is just the same as we did on the bottom side of the rib. Just gently and it doesn't take, once you've got your initial, once the metal starts to bend you get that initial pass and you get the initial bend in there. Continuing to bend it is not a difficult, it's not difficult at all. But because 6061 T6 aluminum is a fairly stiff metal Getting that initial bend in it is the hard part, and then once you've got it, you you can just you can just keep going after that very easily. It's just that first time that metal wants to bend, it really resists it. So that's why it's good for airplane structures. I'm not applying a lot of pressure. You can probably see from the way that I'm hammering, I'm really only holding it like this and I'm actually letting the weight of the, the mallet kind of spring itself back down and do most of the work. It's really just gravity. I'm just using a couple of fingers to kind of control the rate that I'm tapping at it. That's primarily true for mainly the uh, initial bends, getting it down flat against the forming block. Once I get down a little farther, I'll have to put a little more pressure on it to have it form to the shape I want. So, you know, again, uh, as before on the bottom side, we need to now we've, we've got that flange quite flat and quite against the forming block, but we do need to draw the extra material down into the flutes. So the crimps have given us the, the uh, starting point for that. I'll go ahead and draw it down with the mallet and the uh, handle here. And that's going to further shape the metal. So now that I've got those crimps pretty well hammered into place, I'll go ahead and finish hammering this flat against the form block. I'm trying to take out any of the waviness in the metal. takes a little bit more force than the initial a little bit more force than the initial forming because we want to get it into a specific shape now. and 
And then like before, I'll go through one more time with the uh, mallet and the hammer. hammer. And just make sure I've got all that excess that I can drawn, drawn down as tightly as possible. doesn't matter what kind of hammer or if you use a dead blow mallet these things this is a two pound dead blow or maybe a one pound dead blow I think it's two pounds um, it's a little heavy to be hammering away like that it also because it's a dead blow by its very nature it doesn't spring back like a regular rubber mallet will so but I think I paid a total of ten dollars for maybe all of those different hammers at one time or another when you add them all together so there were tools that I already generally had except for the one hammer that I told you I bought specifically to do the uh, fluting. So here's the edge of our flutes. Again very little wavy curvature between the flutes and even the tail end of the wing is quite straight and smooth and that's that's what ends up being our wing profile. That's what sets the the shape of the wing when you put the skins over it, the skins rivet right to this flange. This flange rivets right to the wing spar, which is the main structure of the wing. And then there's a rear channel angle that this rivets to to, to finish up the structure. So when you first pull these away, they have a tendency to be gripping the form block quite tightly. So if, if the bolts are tight in there, I'll pound them out real quick with a hammer. I'll take the top form off at that point. And you can see that this is actually hanging on quite tightly to the rib form block. And that's because those crimps are basically like little fingers holding it on there. But once you get it started, you can pretty well, you want to be very careful because you don't want to put a, a bend in the in the form block, but you can pretty well just pop it away from the form block once you get a few of those crimps started, and they kind of help each other along at the end. So popping that apart, you've got your nicely formed wing rib. In this case, it's the rear rib, and I'll show you one other little thing we got to do to finish this off. Factory form parts always turn out a little better than this. There's not much that you can do about that. There are always, any home built part is always going to be, unless you have access to professional grade equipment, such as uh, bending brakes and everything else, you do have a little bit of uh, manual adjustments. So you look at, I've got this sitting on my router table and there's quite a bow to it. It's fairly banana shaped. The way that you adjust that is again with your fluting pliers. You go into those crimping locations and uh, you just put a slightly deeper crimp in these things and gently go down along the line and what it does is takes that flex that banana shape right out of your wing rib. So now you can see there's much less pronounced banana shape. I gotta do a little bit more. Don't do too much at a time. It's better to just do it exactly right the first time. It's just enough than it is to take too much out. So there we're getting very close. All I'm doing is just squeezing these pliers just a little bit more in those crimping locations to draw that rib flat. And I think I might have put too much in that, that second one there because now this is up, but I still have the other side to do yet. Now it's developing a twist because of that. So I have a little bit on this side to do. Wish I could set the camera up a little differently. Okay. 
All right, so that is the bottom edge of the wing, and that's about as good as that's going to get. That's very flat through there. Turn the wing rib around again and take a look. It's still flexed up a little bit. It actually looks like it's doing it on this third and second one. So all you simply do is turn your pliers around and you can crimp it out back the other direction. You can take some of that crimp out just by simply turning around the pliers and giving it a little squeeze. And we'll take just a touch of that crimp out. And so now we're laying quite flat. Quite flat indeed. There's a slight amount of curvature in between the uh, crimping locations and that's that's just normal. That's the way the metal wants to fold itself. But if you can get it to lay flat, you're pretty much golden. And that looks pretty darn good. My rib lays flat across everything. And uh, I've still got to cut the lightning holes out of the center of it here. There's three lightning holes in all but two of the ribs. Uh, the two next to the fuel tanks um, don't get a rear one. But the rest of them all have three. And then once I put the flanges in the lightning holes, this thing will bow again, and I'll have to relieve the bow out of it again. So you don't want to get too obsessed with making it lay flat before you cut your lightning holes and then flanging it, because you'll have to do a little bit of that again. So I'm um, overall, though, it turned out very well. Very flat, very straight. There's no twist or anything to the rib at this point. And I think we've got a good solid rib here. So we do that a total of 12 times, then flange them and then do them again. Thanks for watching and uh, that's all for now. Good luck with your airplane builds and projects.